statistics, A&E, outpatient and admitted patient care, and also um, have been recently looking at the weekly activity returns on hospital data. Um, absolutely fine to uh, kind of keep uh, cameras off, etc. Most uh, definitely happy. And if you do need to leave at any time, um, I will not be offended. Not a problem. It's um, I know particularly at this uh, point in time, being NHS uh, people, that actually um, it's probably a little bit manic right now. Um, in my daily job, I kind of use Excel, SQL and our studio. Um, but just a little bit um, kind of about you, it's, um, I was going to say uh, just a brief introduction, but actually if you could pop your uh, name and um, could you answer the question, is it snowing where you are? Is it snowing? Because um, I am very happy to uh, show the photo from my window. And a uh, kind of a virtual prize, if anyone can guess the river. A bit slushy in Edinburgh, love it. Oh, no snow. It's my family down south, certainly have no snow. Uh, any guesses for the river? Soggy in Somerset. Oh, no. Oh, no. Gosh, I, th I think the... Uh, um, Wow, I think I must be caught in a patch of snow. That, that's very serious multitasking skills. I am so impressed. I don't know how you're doing it, Robin. Hi there, Pam. I got lost. Not a problem. Absolutely fine, Robin. <laughs> um, if uh, you have guessed or um, kind of haven't, uh, this is the River Air in city centre of Leeds. Um, so we didn't really get much snow last week, but kind of surrounding areas, Harrogate and Farsley certainly did. So I'm very happy to say there's a bit of snow there. Um, right. So um, just a, a kind of a start for me. Why use office R? It's um, the big thing with me is that I wanted to be able to automate PowerPoints. Now, we previously had an Excel spreadsheet that had some um, um, Excel kind of macro in the back that you pressed it and all, all went. That's absolutely brilliant, but it's just like kind of I prefer to have a code that I can just press and go and it just spits out the slides just happily days. Unfortunately, I do not have this option to uh, create the PowerPoint slide. So if I um, kind of open up my studio and um, try to create a, uh, a new markdown file, unfortunately, when I do it, it only has these three options there. Um, this is the big reason for me going down the package Office R route, because actually I don't have the option there to spit it out directly to PowerPoint and certainly it's just like I wanted it to have slides so there's the ability to move it around in a very presentation type basis so th this was the kind of the main reason for that. Um, it's um, uh, Office R is a package that you can use to create PowerPoint slides, you can create Word documents. And for me, it was the very kind of uh, fact that it was much um, kind of it was really easy to produce um, and you can track in images, tables, etc. using R. Um, useful guides, um, there are a couple that I found uh, really useful. The first one is um, David Gould, who um, created the package, has a lovely kind of office uh, verse uh, web page, and it's very similar to um, Hadley Wickham's um, uh, data science using our page, nicely set out. It kind of takes you through um, it in a very kind of um, easy, kind of um, uh, easy um, to see format. Um, found it really useful. The other one is the, um, sorry, next around, um, is David uh, Grohl's actual um, kind of office R page. And there he just goes through the Word documents, PowerPoint documents, um, and other little bits that you can do. Um, 
Right. The other packages that I'll be using is um, data using the NHS R data sets, um, wrangling the data just with um, tidyverse and lubridate, lubridate for the dates, tidyverse to kind of mix it all around and just put it how I want it to. And then the slides, um, I use the scales to make sure that the graphs have the nice little commas on and the little extra bits. Um, grid extra just to set the um, uh, objects on the uh, the graphs, um, multiple graphs on a page. Office R is the overall package. RVG is apparently something I need with the uh, to put on the grid extra um, uh, function. And the Magritar, it's um, used in conjunction with the Office R. It's just like kind of I think it makes things a little bit better placed, I believe. Uh, but I always use the the kind of Magritar with the Office R. Um, so it's just like kind of the process that um, I'm going to use is uh, the data sets, NHS our data sets, kind of wrangle it in R and then spitting it right out into PowerPoint and graphs. Um, I've got, uh, I forgot to put tables on the actual script, but I will certainly update that uh, script to be uh, sending it out. Also any text that you want in there. Um, so it's just like kind of, it's hopefully um, you will uh, the uh, markdown uh, file that I sent through with any luck. Um, if you haven't, please just um, pop um, in the chat and it's just like kind of uh, Sharon, I'm sure, fingers crossed, will be able to send it uh, kind of forward on uh, the email. I've put it as a markdown file mainly because it's um, then we can use a little play button. I don't know if anyone has actually kind of seen markdown files or anything, um, but I tend to use our scripts, which are just like that, that you can just kind of type in your code for when I do uh, my um, uh, kind of general work but actually I find the markdown file it's kind of it, it can be quite useful because you can take through and it uh, chunks it up and it means that things are in blue and um, you can actually type without putting a little hashtag in front. Uh, right starting off um, just just going to play to enable I think it's kind of to enable little chunks there. This is um, the web links. I've also put another little web link uh, there, and that's just a blog about Office R. Um, so it's kind of crafting a PowerPoint presentation, um, which I found, um, again, it's just like kind of, it's nicely set out. They take you through it. Um, and it's just like kind of how you can kind of plan your slide deck. Uh, right. Any questions so far? Uh, right, the, uh, loading the package. These are the packages that um, I've got within uh, the file. So it's um, Tidyverse. I'm a really big Tidyverse fan. Apologies to any base R coders out there. Um, NHS um, R data sets is a um, data set cr um, created. Um, I'm uh, guessing by some NHS people. I should know who it uh, was created by. Um, but it gives A and E breach and admission data from 2016 to 20 uh, to March 2019 and this is the data that I'm using it just means um, that it's um, you're um, able to use NHS style data rather than the iris data set or the um, MT cars for example uh, Lubridate, I'm, um, I, I want to use the month function to kind of uh, lo look at the um, uh, dates there. What app should I use to open the RMD card when using our cloud? Ooh, that's an excellent question. Um, I'm not altogether sure. I'll, I'll have a look into this now, Joe, don't worry. I'm just... Ah. I think you. I mean, when you try to create the uh, project ourselves to upload, so I'm working on it now. Sorry for the delay. No worries. It's um I'm wondering, I've gone with notepad, you can see it all fine. Um 
The difference with the Markdown file and the actual R scripts is just that they're, um, all of them are surrounded by these little, like the little tick, tick, ticks, little code chunks. So actually, it's just like kind of the, these should be able to just be pasted into the um, R Cloud um, app. Fingers crossed. Apologies, I uh, didn't even consider um, R Cloud. That was awful. Um, the Scales um, uh, library, it's just the kind of uh, commas on graphs, and then the office art and the gritter to um, kind of get the slides in, um, kind of to produce the slides, and then these ones to arrange the graphs, and um, the DML function for some reason is needed to arrange the graphs. It didn't previously used to um, be necessary, but um, for some reason now it is. Um, and scrolling down, I'm just going to get rid of all of those. Perfect. Right. Um, so just having a look at the data, top of the data, it looks like that. So it's just like a couple of uh, columns in there. The uh, period or code, the type is a and &E type. So um, type one attendances, type two attendances or others. Um, and then those three columns, uh, one for each of the measures within the data set. Um, just like um, the iris data set, you can um, certainly kind of uh, filter it, put it into your global environment. Um, and that's exactly actually what we're going to do. So I'm just going to click that. Um, I'm going to import it. Um, now, I've popped in here a kind of the, the um, kind of month name. It's really what I want to do is make sure that um, when I plot my um, uh, graphs that it is in a nice kind of uh, order it's in uh, month order rather than alphabetical order I'm sure there is a fabulous way of doing this but I have a rather clunky method there um, and that's to uh, first of all get a month name variable that I uh, vectorize with all the months um, then I'm going to use my a &E attendances put it into um, my kind of a &E imported file um, don't know how um, much kind of people know about tidyverse or the kind of pivot longer, but um, the a and &E attendances had three columns at the very end. And so what I'm going to do is I'm quite literally going to pivot those just so that there is one value in every row. So there's going to be a row for um, 1st of March 2016, 2017 for RF4 type 1 attendances then there's going to be another row for 1st of March 2017 RF RF4 type 1 breaches and the nice uh, thing about this is being able to pivot it into one nice long tidy data um, form is that then I can just use my filter when it comes uh, down to the, my graphs I can just say I want to plot the attendances I want to plot the breaches I want to plot the admissions so this is this um, pivot uh, longer section. I'm spinning rows at uh, columns four to six, four, five, and six, and I'm just going to pivot them. Um, well, unpivot them, I suppose, to have um, it all in one long line. And instead of columns four, five, and six, I'm going to have one column called measure, which is going to be made up of either attendances, breaches, or admissions, and one column called value. Um, there is um, within the uh, data an a and &E type. I'm not too bothered about the a and &E type, so I'm literally just going to group them so that I just have one value for March uh, 2017 for RFR for attendances. So all of these values there, a and &E type one, a and &E type two, and other. I'm literally just going to be adding them all together. Um, there is the, um, I've popped this extra argument in there just to stop it erroring out. It's just like kind of, it's, um, I think it's to do with some sort of um, one of the new um, upgrade um, upgrades in within the dplyr, the uh, manipulating R um, uh, function. So I've literally just put that dot groups equals drop argument to prevent the error. Um, but if you don't put it in, it just it just gives you a little warning message, but it's um, uh, it, it's absolutely fine to continue. Um, the 
other thing that I wanted, I was conscious that I was um, doing a line uh, graph. So what I wanted is instead of having just a whole ream of lines right the way through from January 2016 to um, March 2019, actually what I want to see is the, the kind of the year on year patterns and it's you know, is 20, it is 16, 17, how different is it from 17, 18? Does it look like there are more attendances, more people um, entering a &E? So what I've done is just, just popped a little um, financial year FY uh, column in there. Um, so little case when statement. And so when the period is less than April uh, 2017, I've put it as uh, financial year 1617 and the nice thing is because all of the 1617 uh, values are now done it will then take any extra date uh, um, any of the remaining data and now it's anything less than April 2018 put as financial year 2018. Um, this is this last uh, little bit how I use my um, uh, uh, use this kind of month name uh, function again if you've got a, um, a kind of a better way to do that then absolutely happy days it's um, I'm not a super technical person so this was something that um, managed to get working um, so I um, just literally st stuck with this um, so it's with the period uh, basically take the month name uh, so take the month from the period and um, really allocate it to a um, an actual month name instead of a month number and then I've reset it to be like right this is the order that I want you to appear on the graph mainly going from financial year whereas on here it had to start with January because the month number um, it starts up on which is January Right, I'm just going to run that and with any luck, we should see it appear in our global environment. We've also got under the function um, uh, section, you've got the little my month name, um, but we can just take a little bit of a look at that. Any questions so far? Um, this is probably um, what I find one of the um, Kind of for me, the benefits of kind of it's a, I suppose the Excel and SQL combined. SQL, the fact that you can um, uh, store temporary tables, and at Excel you can very very quickly look at the data and see kind of what it looks like. Um, so R Studio for me kind of combines the best of um, those, and in there we can absolutely see we've got. Um, six columns of data with 24,000 uh, or well, 25,000 um, different observations and um, don't know um, how um, uh, um, uh, kind of advanced in terms of our studio you are but it's certainly clicking that is my kind of go-to just to check out the data just to see what it looks like the nice thing is I've got rid of the um, type um, column a and &E type one any type two, etc., um, and so it is just a nice tidy list of values. Um, so I can even uh, filter on there. And um, uh, use of this uh, code, but it was the um, trust that was nearest to me when I was growing up. So um, I tend to always um, go for. Oh, sorry, no, I can't type. Any attendances for RDU, which is grimly. Um, uh, trust and you can see all of the data there from financial year 2016-17 to 17-18. Um, that's the data that um, I'm working with. I'm not going to kind of uh, do anything else to it. And um, it's uh, the nice thing is it's just like kind of it's all of an um, all in the NHS um, in the um, R Studio packages. So you don't have to import or do anything like that. Right. Um, creating the line chart, um, I've gone for a really kind of uh, basic uh, line chart here. So use ggplot, which is kind of my um, go to for uh, creating these uh, lines, um, creating charts. The data that I'm using, I'm going to use this uh, A&E imported data. And then I'm just going to filter on RDU and attendances just to get all the attendances for Frimley Park Hospital. Um, within uh, there, I want the, um, on the X axis, I've got my month name, Y value, uh, Y axis is going to be my uh, value. I'm going to, 
I'll just kind of colour the uh, different groups because I want the different lines for the different financial years. Lots of different things you can um, add in there. Certainly, I've got a line function later on that actually kind of um, then puts a lot more kind of padding all the way around. Um, at the uh, bottom, I've um, asked it to kind of spit it out. So if I just run that, it means that it's just like kind of it's very kind of uh, quickly uh, spat out exactly what um, I expect to see. I can put titles on there. You can put um, remove the access labels, change the access labels, etc. Um, one thing that you may wish to uh, just uh, kind of caution um, when it comes to um, the this step is if the um, structure did not happen to exist at the um, time, it won't produce anything. So ROB, um, R0B is South Tyneside and Sunderland, and the trust was only created in um, April 2019 as a, a merger of. Um, to uh, the South Tyneside and Sunderland. Um, likewise, if you have um, R0A, which is the Manchester University um, Hospital Trust, you'll see only two lines. It's um, That is um, because it was a merger of two of the uh, Manchester Trusts into one. Um, they, they are all there um, of, as of the time. So it's the Manchester ones, it's RM2 and RW3. So you will find those ones in there. Um, but it's just like kind of just, just, just a small caveat um, when using this uh, data set. Right, that's the uh, line. We've got no questions in the chat. Happy days. It's uh, do feel free to put um, questions in the chat. Um, absolutely happy to take them all the way through. Um, if I'm going too fast, please say stop, slow down. Um, and if um, you, uh, I am going a little bit um, too slowly, do feel free to make yourself a cup of tea while I ramble on. Um, so importing uh, the PowerPoint, the really nice thing with um, the Office R package is that it actually has a PowerPoint template within it. So you don't actually have to import it if you've got all the kind of little bits and bobs to uh, make your PowerPoint um, presentations. On the other hand, if you do have a PowerPoint template that you um, wish to add uh, upload, so for example, your organisation PowerPoint, then you can do this as well. So it's um, this is the uh, command just to read in a blank uh, PowerPoint slide. So it's the one that comes with Office R and it's a standard um, uh, Office one. If I run these, you will get two things uh, coming out. So if I look at, first of all, this uh, data frame. Now, the standard uh, PowerPoint is really helpful. It's got lots of different types of slides that you can use. Um, unfortunately, the um, uh, my um, organization one isn't quite so nice. So this is the normal standard PowerPoint uh, template. And you can see in there, you've got these nine different options that you can use all different kind of layouts of your slide. Do you want the title slide? Do you want the title and the content, title and two content? And it's this that is the different layouts that you can use. So in this kind of layout, we've got all of these different options are available. So you can have your title slide, which is uh, kind of I suppose the, the starter title and uh, content with the title with the big kind of like body of the content. You've got section headers, you've got two contents. Happy days. Um, unfortunately, if I put in um, and I will upload my um, kind of PowerPoint uh, template in here, it's um, you can. Uh, um, this is, I'm just going to paste, and this is the uh, location where it is uh, saved in, my kind of uh, drive. This is the name of the file, and I'm just going to separate these two things by little um, a, um, a backslash there. Um, if I run this one now, um, we have a um, quite a different um, kind of set of options, and unfortunately, an incredibly limiting set of options on here. Um, my organisation slide uh, looks like 
Uh, this and these are quite literally the two options that I have. Either it's a title slide or it's a title and content. Um, so although there's limited, um, although there are limited options with uh, this, the nice thing is that you can actually position your um, data, your graph, your text in anywhere that you like. So even though you may have quite limited options in terms of the layout, you actually still get. Um, a lot of uh, kind of um, options in how you place your um, data. Um, oh, actually, I'll just head over there. Um, I'm going to go back then to using the template uh, presentation. Uh, chuck it in there. So the layout summary is all of the different uh, slides uh, layouts that uh, you can put in. And the properties are all of the different things that you can use in order to place this. So, for example, in the um, apologies, it's not in order. So, in the title uh, slide, uh, is that on the first one? Title only. The... Oh, there it is. Sorry about that. Um, in their title slide, for example, you have the uh, this column there is type. And so you can put in a main title and on the title slide, you can also put in a subtitle. And it's this is where I go go to to, to kind of um, put extra things on there. Lots of different options that you can put in. There's the titles. Uh, you can put in footers. Um, we've got the slide number. If you, for example, forget to put something on a slide, you can go back and actually say, ah, yikes, on slide number one, could you put, put a little extra footer on here? Um, and this is the, the, the kind of the, the, the go to in terms of um, the language that you'll need to kind of put it on. The nice thing is that it also works with um, PowerPoint templates that are not in your, um, uh, that are not the um, standard Office PowerPoint as well. All of those will have um, all the different options. So lots of different things you can do. However, like I said, you can also decide exactly where on the slide that you um, put this um, information. Scrolling down then, um, to create it. It's um, quite literally feeding um, uh, our studio nice load of instructions. Um, so the, um, yep, apologies, that is a typo, is it a typo? I don't, don't know how to spell, apologies, versatile. Oh, gosh, ignore that please. Um, first of all, you want to read in the PowerPoint. So you can use um, uh, anything that you like. I tend to do this underscore PowerPoint because that's what I started with. And so literally everything else has been copied and pasted through that. Um, within the, um, once you have read in the PowerPoints, if I put that, that um, you will get um, just over here, kind of this PowerPoint um, is, is just a list because, um, and it will continue just to be a list because it's a collection of um, kind of the slides and all of the different things that you've popped on the slides. So if you look at it, it's not incredibly exciting. It's got the list of length at zero. There's no slides we've put on there. It's quite literally just the template that you can uh, use. Next thing is um, you can add the slide and the add slides um, uh, function. You've got, first of all, uh, what do you want to add the slide to? And it's um, add it into this PowerPoint. Alternatively, you can um, just join it on using the little percent greater than percent, a, a kind of a tidy verse function. I think of it as and then. So it's uh, first read in the PowerPoint and then you can add the slide, but I've just broken it up um, uh, just, just to make it a little bit easier to read. So adding the slides, where do you want to add it on? I want to add it onto this PowerPoint. What layout do we want? I'm going to have the title um, slide from the master office theme. And so the layout is just up here, um, the title slide with the um, office theme. Um, I believe if you just um, ignore the master um, uh, argument, it will still work um, because it's, there is only one title slide option. 
Uh, within there, what, once you've chosen what your uh, slide is, then we can add titles. So I've got a main title and I've got a subtitle. This is um, using this little PH with. Previously, uh, about a year or so ago, it used to be all of the different um, options um, were different functions. So um, the pH would be uh, VG it's with, the, with the graphical uh, functions. However, they've now changed it. So pH with is basically what you want to put if you want to add anything onto a slide. So we've got our slide um, almost at uh, our slide skeleton, as it were. And then what we're going to do, um, we can put on uh, this value then is used for anything that you like. It's used for the text, it's used for a graph. It's basically, it's like, what is it that you want to put on? Um, in here, we can also link this and automate it to um, previously stored variables. Um, I'm just going to say, I want my title to be A&E uh, PowerPoint, and I want it to be the um, kind of the center title. And this um, uh, thing that you can uh, see from the, I think it was the last one, uh, this center title. That's where we get the um, kind of code from there. Got the center title and we've also got a subtitle in there. So if we now run that one, we should be able to see, fingers crossed, that um, the, this PowerPoint now has a list of one, which is brilliant. Um, we've got some sort of slide in there. Uh, the number of slides is the list that it has. So it isn't the individual commands, add slide, add title, add center title, add um, subtitle. It is the overall, how many slides do you have? Um, viewing the PowerPoint, one of the uh, big things with uh, me is to be able to actually spit out the uh, PowerPoint into a kind of another drive to be able to actually look at it um, because list is not incredibly helpful for me. Um, I've put my path output in there so you can literally change yours to any that you um, uh, like, wherever it is that you want to kind of store yours, output it, uh, you can just change it. Um, just make sure it's just like kind of with our studio, it doesn't um, like the backslash um, symbol in file path. So change the backslash to the forward slash. Um, I've asked it just to print out uh, this uh, PowerPoint there, and my path output is this uh, kind of end drive. And I'm just going to name it as example. Um, a &E presentation. Like most things, don't think um, in our studio. Don't forget to put the um, .pptx on the end. Otherwise, it won't know what type of file to print it out to. Um, so if I just run that, and it let's just find my other uh, section there. Um, in the example A and &E presentation, we should have it. Uh, set out. It seemed a lot of, um, kind of code just to produce that, but um, certainly we've got um, this is your main example uh, PowerPoint. We've got a we've added a slide. It was a title slide, so we do have it in this form with the um, center title part and the subtitle part. Um, any questions with that? Um, you might want to add a graph onto the uh, slides. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just literally going to repeat the exact uh, code that I did at the very top, just to put on a title slide with the example PowerPoint and attendances, breaches and admissions. There are um, several ways that you can put um, slides on, and it's really all to do with this um, kind of uh, location part. So you can choose to have it as a full size, you can choose to put it as the body of a slide, you can choose to have it on the left, the right, and you can even choose how big, how small, and how far from the top and the left that you can put it. So on here, you've really got all these different uh, type of options in there. The um, uh, first of all, um, adding the slide, just adding the slide, um, and now choosing the title and content because I don't want the uh, title slide layout, it's the title and content, I want the title and I want a little body. Uh, the value, uh, line graph for PowerPoint. Uh, we saved uh, this a little bit um, earlier 
on um, if I do line graph for PowerPoint. No, sorry about that. Um, just to just run this one there. It was at the moment, it was that, oh, it was the, um, uh, I think it was the ROA one. I'm just going to change, go back um, into the uh, code and just change that to the RDU one, just so that we've got the three lines. So it's a little bit more exciting. Um, there we go. And now, fingers crossed, that is a little bit more exciting. Um, three lines instead of the uh, this data plot. Um, we are on adding graph onto the slides. So the uh, title slide's already been put on. We've added a slide title and content and its um, location. I'm going to put it as a full size. Um, so this is quite literally going to fill the entire page. And um, actually, there's um, because it fills the entire page, I'm not going to bother putting a title on there. Also, to um, let you see the difference, it's like kind of we've also got, if I add another um, slide onto there and a title and content slide again. I'm going to put a title on here um, and have it as the uh, title because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the body of the slide. Now with the PowerPoint you've got the title and then you've also got the body and um, so you can actually put, um, have anything that you need in the title and anything that you need in the body. Uh, add a uh, new slide and the other thing that I use quite um, often is putting it exactly where I want it. So the third option, full size, put it in the body, or the third option is completely up to you. Um, where you put it, how you put it, how big you put it, all of um, this bit is exactly the same as just the um, one previously, chucking a title and content, putting a title, but it's just this part here, um, you're able to say how far from the left you want it, from the top, how big you want it, how tall you want it. Um, I've just put in some dimensions there, but um, you can um, make it uh, smaller, bigger, and change it all around. So if now I put it in and um, run that through there, we should be able to... Uh, why are you doing that? Oh, right. Apologies for this. Live coding. Right, I'm just going to quickly just run the code that I need and import the data. Loaded the libraries, import the data and created a line graph, right. Um, in PowerPoint, adding the graph onto the slide, right. Um, oh, I just thought, ah, oh, brilliant. A uh, lovely uh, schoolboy error. Uh, my PowerPoint was already still open in um, the output file. Uh, lovely learning points. Don't forget to close your file, otherwise our studio won't be happy. Um, if I then kind of run it again, it shouldn't uh, crash and we should have everything that we need. Everything went green except for this part here. Path output not found. Apologies for this. Path output. Oh, there it is. Forgot to run that to get the path output in there. And now if I run it all the way through, we're green, 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 and yes, we are green. Um, so now if I look at the example um, A and E PowerPoint now, it looks a little bit um, different. We've got our three versions of the slides. So you've got your full size um, graph, you have your um, title and body. So this is a very standard, it will just fill the body. And then this one is the one that you can, um, this was the modified one. So it's the one, uh, change the, um, any of the um, measurements and you can actually just kind of put it in a different place. Right. 
remember to close that. Um, other thing that you may or should do, um, adding kind of text onto the slide. Um, so we've got this um, uh, option to add text and it's um, quite literally using the same, um, uh, exactly the same code, which is the value. Value, you can put the a image, you can put a graph, you can put text in there. Right, um, so first of all, it's just like kind of add it um, on. I'm going to add now a two content uh, slide. This was one of the previous options um, and it really means that I've got kind of two sections and uh, the, the kind of the slide divides the body into two. Um, Tight, overall title is going to be this one and um, in the left hand side again we're using this location and we've got a little ph um, underscore location underscore left but you can do as we did before and you can actually say I want it to be in exactly this position because um, I only have very limited options on um, my um, PowerPoint template, actually what I tend to do is, is use the left, right, um, head, um, height, width, etc. to quite a um, uh, substantial um, advantage. Uh, then we've got on the right, I'm quite literally just, just going to put the text in here. Uh, like HTML, it's uh, the backslash N will put it on a new line. So although it looks a little bit grisly in there, it's just like kind of the um, backslash N will mean that it will be on um, separate bullet points. That's the option with um, one version. So the pH location left and the pH location right. You can also put in um, here and you can actually uh, use these uh, little kind of pH labels. So again, exactly the same uh, thing. We're inserting a two content slide and we've got a pH location um, uh, when we've got a graph on it different code and the only different uh, code is the con content placeholder two. What you might have seen at the very um, top was um, uh, another row of data where actually, uh, sorry, another column where you can actually um, kind of be a little bit more specific. So um, the, um, so we're just on to after there, nope. There it is. Um, so on here, we've got this little section here. So if I go to my uh, two content, we've got uh, content placeholder two. This is where this pH label can be used. So it's as well as um, uh, you could just say it's in the body. However, you also have a breakdown of the body because both of those content placeholders two and three are separate parts of the slide. So content placeholder two is the one on the left and the content placeholder three is the one on the right. And putting the text on two slides. The end bit there then, no different from the one on the top. It was the uh, chuck in whatever it is you want. So I'm going to chuck in a line graph for the PowerPoint, and then I'm going to um, pop in this text on the right and placeholder two and placeholder three. Um, exporting the PowerPoint, just double check it's not open. Yep. Um, we'll then put it out. Um, apologies for changing between the uh, environments. We don't actually have office on the environment that I've got our studio on. And unfortunately, the R studio on my uh, work laptop isn't um, too happy at the moment. So um, I did have to go through an environment. So apologies, you, 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 may, you may think, why now, um, am I doing that? Um, right, so first of all, um, you can uh, probably see on there, uh, there is no difference between the uh, two of them. It's quite literally just using different code, uh, like our studio, lots of different ways around you can uh, do it. My instant reaction uh, there is that this is all a bit too squashed. I would want to kind of um, reduce the height a little bit to be able to um, uh, make it a little bit um, easier to read. But these are the text for slides. And yes, the backslash followed by the N can be used to separate out those bullet points. And 
before I move on to this line graph function, anyone got any questions? Zooming through the slides, so uh, you will get a lot of your uh, kind of life back at the uh, end if you uh, uh, so wish. Um, but yes, it's just like, do feel free to put in uh, any questions, absolutely happy. Um, what I was uh, planning on is having a 10 minute break at about 10.30 or so, um, uh, just, just so that you can kind of go grab a cup of tea or what have you. Um, but yeah, zooming through the uh, slides, so it's just like kind of yeah, plenty of time for any questions, uh, particularly if you want to kind of try it out with your own um, material, very, very happy to kind of help. Um, uh, because of the... Um, uh, necessity to kind of repeat everything at different organization levels. I find having a function really, really uh, useful for me. And uh, what it means that is that I can fully customize absolutely everything and then just bring it up as I need to. So we've got the um, pre uh, prevent any uh, kind of uh, code, it's just like kind of the function here is quite literally all I'm doing is using two little arguments and it's very much the same as the line uh, chart that I created earlier but I'm just kind of uh, wrapping the um, uh, kind of a function around it. What do I mean? It's in the line graph, creating this uh, line graph if I put in the line the chart here, the only thing that we're actually taking and bringing into this code is two little arguments. One is the org code and one is the measure. So if I just change um, org code um, into being a, oh, I just changed, sorry, org to use, if I put two, new measures here, measure to use, where the all to use is going to be the RDU and the attendances is going to be the measure to use. Then I can pop this in here, just like that. Very uh, limited um, stuff that I've done. So it's just like, then if I run that code to put it into the, oh, to use, run the whole code even, um, to put it in, and then I'll put that down the bottom, makes a little bit more logical sense. And on here, the graph looks exactly the same. The only thing that we've done is to actually kind of um, uh, use these as functions instead. To finish off this function, I'm just going to wrap it around. So it's a uh, function uh, line, call it whatever you like. And um, the only thing that you need is it needs to um, have the arguments put inside here, and then the whole thing gets wrapped around by curly brackets. So curly brackets at the top and curly brackets at the bottom. Um, first off, it's the two things that um, it seems to depend. One is the all to use, and one is the measure to use. So these are the only things that went through the line graph, first of all, and they're the only things that I want at the end. The, you do have to tell the um, uh, function whether you want it to return or not, otherwise it'll just store it. Um, so if I just do the turn uh, line chart there, it should have gone blue. Why is it not going blue? Something a little bit off there, I can't see for that. Oh, right, put it in the uh, uh, brackets, apologies for that. if I do that, we've now actually set up our line function. So the data is taken from here. The inputs are the org to use and measure to use. And all of this is kind of just set up for anything that we choose. Um, if I kind of run that, we've got in here now, we've got a function that we can use. So if I put in the using that function, 
Yeah. Um, nice and helpfully, it tells us what um, it is expecting. So in here, I'm going to put RDU and I'm going to put attendances. Like that. Um, and even at NICER, when we run that, uh, we will see the uh, exactly the same graph. So I will put it there. You can see the change. Um, RDU attendances changes it automatically. Um, we've got different measures in there. So because we have the data as a nice tidy data format, um, actually it means that we can change them really easily just to show admissions instead. Uh, next one, uh, there we've got the function line. This is quite literally the only things that um, are going to be using on this function uh, line chart. But I have put in a little bit of extra formatting. Um, my colours, these are the colours that I'm choosing for my lines, mainly because it's um, I really need it to be organisation friendly um, and this the RGB uh, colours I am pretty lazy I just open up Excel have the colour that I want and choose it or look at my organisation communication style guide and chuck it in there you don't have to use RGB colours in there you can use the um, other the um, uh, for, is the hex colours or something with, uh, that begins with a hashtag um, but I like the RGB mainly because I can see it really easily on Excel and um, that's a really poor excuse for why uh, but that's my uh, reason. So uh, exactly the same as we have done uh, before we've uh, now kind of um, uh, put it as, as a function or to use a measure to use I've kept exactly the same uh, aesthetics there for the x and y and kept the line. Um, the extra stuff is really kind of just making it a little bit nicer um, for, well, my presentation. Um, theme minimal just kind of gets rid of loads of background noise. Um, I don't like the grey line, the grey background, so it just kind of easily removes those. And then you can put in all your different kind of specifications within the um, theme function. Uh, just here. Um, so we've got different things with the legend. Um, you can uh, choose what colour to put it, you can choose what size, um, you can um, chuck in the axis. Um, I tend to go for kind of grey mainly because then the lines will kind of pop and stand out a little bit better. Um, and you can also choose with your plot colour. Um, anything that is level is maybe grey, I believe. Um, so 89, 89, 89. I think this was um, one of the um, style guides for um, my organisation, but it's just like kind of all these can be changed. Um, I'm going to chuck the title and it's the um, title that I've used have, uh, first of all, it's um, taking the org to use and the measure to use. There's nothing more that uh, kind of uh, confuses me more than seeing a graph exactly like this and not actually knowing what it's for. So it's just like kind of, but I don't want to um, uh, have to fill it in every time. So that just uses the, just the two inputs that came into um, the function. Uh, the data is from April 16 to March 16. So I've combined the um, a bit of the um, uh, variables with a bit of standard text. I've just separated it with, with kind of nothing there. This scale color manual, this was the, the kind of the, my colors at the very top. So it's now when my line chart chooses colors, it actually goes to the ones that I've manually set it to be. Little caveat, it's um, the ones that is first in the table will be the color that is first in the list. So 2016, 17 comes before anything else. So 2016, 17 will have the 217, 217, 217, a version of grey, whereas the 17, 18 will have that. And um, it is um, possible certainly to um, kind of um, uh, have specific colours for specific metrics, but um, I haven't quite got uh, that far. It's just like all I make sure is that the data is in the order that I want it to appear there, either by using the arrange function in uh, the dplyr to make sure my data is in the correct order. 
Then the skills continuous, um, this is, um, it is large data in there. So what I've used is just the comma format um, just to make it look a little bit less ugly. And certainly for a very large organization, it means that uh, you're able to kind of read it in a much, much nicer way. Um, so if I run this, um, you should have a, yep, uh, a nice kind of function line chart. Um, function line was just the one I created on the other sheet. Function line chart then, if we look at the difference with that uh, function line chart. chart um, I'm going to look at RD because it's got a complete uh, data set rather than um, RIA, which is missing some of the data. And I'm just going to look at attendances. So if I put that, it's, it's quite literally just the aesthetics has changed. Nothing else has changed. Um, but to be honest, it's uh, for me, it takes, around, it takes away lots of the really glaringly annoying things, um, such as, let me change that into... there which can look uh, kind of distract from um, I think the message whereas the uh, bluer the line the more recent the data um, so it's kind of a little bit uh, kind of clearer. Right any questions I'm just, just going to be reading that one during the um, kind of short uh, pause um, but I will um, let uh, you grab kind of to break away from the laptop um, and if I kind of restart at about 10.40 that would be um, brilliant. Any questions do feel free to put in the chat and I'll be working way through this one right now. Cool, see you in 10 minutes questions it's um the slides for me are really kind of um based around how um what my kind of um uh role really uh is and it's just like kind of what i need to do for my um kind of for my role and that is the uh, customers want the same type of graph um, repeated for lots and lots of different organizations and um, so it's instead of actually having to copy in the code the nice thing is having a uh, the idea of a function will allow me just to uh, quite literally just chuck any um, organization and measure in there and spit out the uh, graph. Oh, sorry, I'll do the uh, nicer one in there. Uh, spit out the uh, graph for attendances, um, also do for admissions as well. Um, and the nice thing is now that because we've got um, a, a nice title, you can actually kind of see it. Um, I've been very slack and I haven't put a look up in there. So I do realise that it is org code rather than the actual organisation name. That probably would have been um, kind of far better. My standard files, I would tend to look up to either an Excel lookup or a ideally a, um, a reference table in my database. And so the nice thing is because we can um, uh, link our studio right into whatever SQL or kind of data store that um, you have, it's um, then it's if the names are updated, it will just automatically pull through. And that's what I love kind of setting things up so that then they just automatically go. Um, we did it as uh, line graphs uh, previously. It's um, again, you can do it as anything um, you like there. It's whenever I do the uh, change it from line graphs into bar um, charts, it's just like kind of either I use the geome bar or the geome uh, col uh, function in there. Um, but it's just like kind of because the um, it will automatically put one on top of the other, I do have to use the weird dodge. Um, uh, function. What do I mean by that? If I um, just copy all of that data there, and if I just change that directly, instead of um, having it as I think all to use and measure to use should already be stored in here. Measure to use is attendances, and all to use is um, RDU. So this will be my um, pretty grotty looking uh, one there. Sorry about that. I haven't copied the whole thing. Apologies. 
2 d plots. That's uh, that's better. Um, so we've got the kind of nice, um, slightly ugly uh, background there. If I change it to uh, the geome bar now, it's um, this will automatically um, put on or try to count the um, observations, but because it's um, really not happy, um, one of the uh, arguments that I can put in here is uh, stats equals um, um, in there, and it will, this kind of really forces it to use the um, values that are in the Y um, uh, section, so it's like kind of the actual attendances. Um, this isn't too helpful for me. First of all, it's um, it does look uh, quite um, uh, claustrophobic, really, with those colours. So I'm just going to put the um, fill as a grey in there instead of that kind of um, uh, quite heavy colour in there, just to kind of take the focus away. Lots of different options within those. You can change the colours of the outline, etc. Um, or alternatively, it kind of gives the position um, uh, arguments in there. So it's the automatic thing to stack all of the financial years on top of each other. Whereas if I just change that into a dodge, um, it quite literally puts it a little bit uh, nicer kind of side by side. Um, so for my example, I find the lines much um, kind of easier to see so you can actually see the, the, the trend that certainly um, bar charts um, uh, is another way. The other thing that you can do is instead of the bar charts, change it to a call. Um, and the only thing that you don't need is this kind of stacked identity. Um, so if I just uh, do that, it's um, uh, very, very little has changed. So it's um, the nice thing is it's just like kind of with functions, you can set things up and then use them very, very quickly. Um, so you might have a, um, a bar chart um, option. You may controversially have a pie chart function. Um, you may um, kind of have different line charts um, showing the different um, things. So for example, um, when I've got a weekly set of reports that has a line chart with the actual values, and then we've got a line chart showing the percent um, restored. So this is the activity as a percentage of last year's activity. Um, certainly um, uh, kind of interesting to note I suppose uh, right now uh, that particular thing but yeah functions I find really really good one of the um, questions that previously had was how can you do it and repeat it for a series of um, organizations of slides unfortunately it's um, I have previously used a loop although I know that I should go into more of the per pu treble r uh, function um, which kind of repeats and does things um, over and over for some reason it's the um, loop function didn't um, appear to work so what i wanted to do is say here's all my organizations here's my um, code for my slides I want you to do this code for every single organization. Um, it would have been a very, very basic uh, thing that was missing, but unfortunately it was something that I was missing. So it's um, uh, unfortunately not something that I'm uh, kind of able to talk about because I haven't yet fixed the problem, um, but it's certainly something that I want to. Um, so quite literally it's, um, you can uh, just set it up uh, to say, right, I'm gonna put this function on there. Alternatively have a function that creates a, um, a PowerPoint uh, set of slides. We can look at that one as well. Uh, right, looking then at, we've got the uh, line graph function and this kind of plots the nice, um, easy to uh, kind of look at. There we go, uh, east, uh, nice kind of easy to look at uh, graph that I can easily put on um, slides. 
Next thing is um, text uh, function. I love the automation uh, with this and it's um, I've put this in because it's a way that we can automate um, something that I needed to do, which was the uh, maximum and minimum number of um, uh, items. So it's um, digging you through. We've got the uh, filtered data set. Here to see a little bit um, nicer. Um, again, we've got the uh, creating a filtered data set to, just to uh, use what we mean that data export uh, filtered. Just have a look at that. This is all the RDE attendances right from uh, about 16, 17, 18, 19. So this is the data set I'm using for it. Um, I'm going to find my maximum value. So it's um, I might be interested in the, the, the peaks or the troughs. So I'm going to exactly the same. Um, use the little uh, group by, but now I'm not interested in the period because all I want to do is uh, for this uh, measure, um, I want to find the um, maximum value. I've realised we've only got one measure and we've only got one org code. So actually, uh, this uh, particular code is apparently um, redundant. So apologies for that. It's a little bit of redundant code in there. Um, but it's uh, just ensures that if I've missed anything in terms of A&E type, it means it's um, uh, all, there we go. Done. Right, so if I just run that, um, it should just give me a nice one observation. And um, so in here, we've got the ANA attendances, and um, is um, 21,519, and we haven't got ANA attendances there. Uh, 21,000, It's uh, that certainly does um, uh, check out right from the graph, it's just like kind of uh, the, the peak point. What I've done then is I've joined it back on to that data filtered. So this data filtered was all of the RDU um, attendances. And what I've done is um, if you don't put in the little buy, it will automatically um, look at the um, kind of match things up um, uh, for you. This will allow me to actually say, right, for this particular attendance, which is the 21,519, what is it that is the period that it is, is kind of, um, uh, that matches it? So it's almost like um, saying, we've started with all of our data and we've got our max value, and now we're almost doing a lookup. It's just like kind of onto that original data set. So it's like, look up this one. And so I only take the uh, 21,000, 519 attendances and bring it into there. So if I then just run this one, it's now we've got, um, we've put in there the period instead. So we've got the max value, it's um, the, that maximum value happened in July uh, 2016. Apologies for the um, break there. Um, now, in terms of the bullet point, this is where you can quite literally um, automate as you like. Um, certainly, it's um, I look at it as exactly the same as automating in Excel. If you, for example, got some sort of dashboard that you want some sort of comments to come out of, or uh, this is the, the kind of the most attendances, this is the organisation that had the um, kind of uh, minimum number of attendances, so it's what I'm uh, going to do is the uh, paste uh, function just quite literally zaps loads of things together. So anything in green, this is your hard uh, code text. So I'm going to say, right, maximum number of whatever measure it is we put in. And the measure that we've currently got is attendances. And I'm going to put in the uh, max value um, dollar sign value. Now, this is a nice way of actually um, taking um, the max value is a function that uh, is a uh, variable we've stored in here. And if you put the uh, dollar sign, you can see what, what column is it that you would like to um, uh, have back. If I put the period, it would show me the um, 
uh, update. However, if I put in there, I've got the value. Let me look at you. Um, there it is. Cool. Uh, if I've got the value, then it's 21,519 and the same value. Um, I've popped a little comma around it mainly because I've got the, um, uh, I like to um, have things very much more readable. I don't like loads of zeros all in a row. I kind of want them ch chopped up by um, the commas in there. So um, I've got a sentence to say, what is the maximum value? And then I've got a sentence to say when it is that this was. So it's just like kind of, so I'm using that uh, month name variable. And then I'm also taking the year part of the period. So although we can say that the period we know is um, July 2016, actually, if I put a little wrapper around that and say, tell me what the year is, then it will just give me the 2016 because certainly if I'm, I'm having it as a PowerPoint, it's likely to um, be with people who just, just want to kind of quickly see uh, what the values is. They, they don't want to really kind of have something like that, that showing um, unless it's in a kind of like a nice form. Certainly it's the same way with um, Excel. I often use the um, text uh, function within a cell to say, right, text, uh, um, uh, uh, text open up bracket Gra grab the cell that you want and then you can choose how you want to have it uh, you can day day dash month 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 will have it for example 14 dash jan day day month month um, year year will put in kind of a more of a date format so this is kind of um, very kind of similar to that and um, Always put in um, what it's uh, separated uh, by. So this um, little kind of piece of uh, text there is all in one uh, kind of um, one bit. What you can do is if you can put in more uh, bullet points, and um, the if I just copy those and put it after that, then these two separate items will be separated by this kind of little backslash N. And the backslash N is um, a, a nice thing that just kind of puts it onto the next bullet point or the next line. And um, that's the, the kind of the big things within the uh, code itself. What is it, if I just move that one, what is it that it actually does? Well, if I run the that and then return a text for slide. And um, you will see in there, it's just like kind of this. This is the kind of the text that is coming out. Um, so it's just like kind of safe for everything. And the nice thing is um, with this, it's completely automated. So um, there was nothing that I put in there except for the organization name and the um, measure. So I'm going to go back to the um, markdown pile there and we've got our function uh, text, we've wrapped it around, we've uh, got exactly the same two arguments that we previously had for our line function, we've got, you can put in any organisation, any measure, we create this uh, data filtered uh, section in there, uh, the group, um, we've got the maximum value, we've uh, uh, found the maximum value from that set of data and then we've joined back on to that data filtered to be able to have kind of some sort of lookup to be able to say right the 21,000 is linked to July 2016. Um, and then I quite literally just um, select only the things that um, I'm interested in and um, it's because I've used different packages, um, some of which have the select uh, function in it. Um, it means sometimes I have to put what package I've used before it. Um, it didn't apply to um, this particular uh, instance. And you can always check when you load a package in the library, it will say what it's um, kind of um, what it might have issues with. So if you load two libraries, both of whom have select in um, just be super um, kind of um, wary that it might go a little bit funny if you don't force it to say right I want you to take the select function from that package 
Um, this is previously uh, kind of copied uh, code. So it's the interdependencies, I think, was on filter and something else um, in the stats package uh, when we load the libraries. So the select one, I don't think applies to, uh, now, but I tend to just for uh, kind of good practice. And so I don't end up with an error that I'm uh, I keep forgetting what it means. Uh, and then, then this is the um, exact text uh, that we went through there. Uh, because it's a function, uh, whatever you have, if you want it returned, put it as a little return. So if I run that one, uh, just play this there, um, we should then see a nice um, new function in there, and that is our function text. If I just take it out onto one of the other... function text in here, I can put it as I can argue attendances, apologies, I tend to take an example and go with it. Um, quite interestingly enough, it's um, you can automate things, but um, do be careful of some um, automations. Um, and that is, um, I believe it's admissions. Machines. Um, we in here, uh, when we uh, went through the admissions code, we actually have two um, options there. We've only taken the uh, maximum number of admissions, so it coincidentally, and I'm not sure how um, likely this is or unlikely, but the number of admissions was exactly um, the same in May 18 and January 19 um, for kind of the, the, the maximum numbers. Certainly, if you want to kind of get around this, you can say, actually, we want the maximum period, for example, as well. So only show the latest period. Um, but this is a, a kind of a nice way that you can check. Is it um, kind of does it seem sensible, I suppose? Going back then into our uh, function, um, our uh, markdown file, we've now got a fully automated uh, um, a function for our line graph and a function for our text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that um, together so we can actually then produce kind of um, PowerPoint slides then that actually can just spit this out um, kind of very, very easily. Um, Checking the uh, functions, I totally forgot, apologies, that I had uh, this uh, section there. So we can actually kind of go through. So I've done some examples with the um, uh, the attendances, function line, uh, the admissions and the breaches. And all the text is just in um, here, just um, and nice and confusing. Uh, we've got those two there. Um, it's uh, one and two there. Right, any questions so far? No? For real. Uh, right, now I'm going to kind of put all those together and um, specify an organisation and a measure. Then um, we can kind of quickly add the slides onto the PowerPoint. What we can all also do is um, you can actually wrap that right around. Um, so I, I don't know kind of in um, terms of good practice, whether it's a good practice to have a function inside a function, but certainly it's that's what I've got for one of my regular reports. So I've got a function for the line graph. I've got a function for the uh, line graph with the restored values. And then I've got a uh, version of a table. And what I do is I have a uh, function to create the slides because some of the slides I want just one of those line graphs on and then other slides I kind of want two so it's a then I can just quite literally put the organization and the measure or whatever arguments that I want inside what do I mean in and um, here we've gone exactly the same way we've read in the powerpoint we've added in that uh, title slide I've created a two content uh, slide with the uh, with the title, and here we've got added a um, line chart onto the body of the uh, slide. This is how then um, uh, the kind of reduced code, I suppose, to chuck this in. Always have the uh, value. The value is what is it that you're going to put on there. Location is or where do you want it to be put. And I've got on this uh, section there, I've added a graph onto the left hand side and the text onto the apologies right hand side there. I think, uh, 
Um, and then just with uh, kind of um, exactly the same code, but a different measure, then I've just chopped on and um, copied those. And of course, because I've copied and pasted right as well. On the divisions then, the left and right hand side. So I'm just going to double check that it's not open in my environment. Yes, cool. And if I just run that, then we should have a nice green, all go green, and it's been modified about now. So we can see in here, we've got the attendances um, for RDU. Um, and admissions, uh, we've got that uh, puzzling two sentences, but less puzzling when we see that they're both six six four six six four two, both of which it's with a little bit of extra code you can choose which it is that you would prefer. Right, moving on then uh, within. It's um, one of the things that um, I um, also like to do is put on actually kind of um, two sets of slides and um, for, um, multiple graphs. So you can either do that as a add in the uh, little uh, PH uh, sections and then say I want, uh, if I put up to uh, find a bit of code that uses the left and right. Sorry about this, it's going to be, oh, there it is. Um, so either what you can do is you can just keep on adding things and fully specify exactly where it is that you want them. Um, however, I don't like writing out um, the, the kind of the one, 2.5, eight, et cetera, exactly the same way. I would rather say, this is the space that you have to put all the, those graphs. Can it? Can you possibly kind of put them on? So lots of different ways around in our, um, our studio, like any coding, you can kind of copy that and say, I want that to be there, that to be there, which is particularly useful if you've got a, a very large graph that you want to, or a large object that you want to put in the uh, middle and then have kind of smaller objects around text boxes, images, other graphs. Um, however, for um, the other way that you can do it is to um, put on, um, use a, um, the grid.arrange um, uh, function. Now the grid.arrange basically it just kind of messes them all around and be like, right, I'm going to uh, kind of arrange it in however it is that you want. Do you want a two by two grid? Do you want a one by three grid? How is it that you want it? Um, in the uh, very top, what I've also done is kind of put um, some things that you can actually um, customise. So I've got uh, one of the text formats is that I want some of my letters to be in bold through uh, this colour and this font size, whereas other ones I want actually not to be in bold and to be in um, grey, one, two, eight, one, two, eight, one, two, eight, um, and a kind of a smaller font size. So kind of thinking about more kind of heading based things and um, uh, font, uh, sorry, and um, other text based things going through exactly the same thing, reading in the PowerPoint um, uh, template, adding the title slide with the PowerPoint, uh, example PowerPoint and attendances, breaches and admissions as the two titles, adding in a two content slide and then putting in the title. So uh, nothing's kind of changed from there. And again, it's just like kind of, it's the, it's the repetition, adding, adding, adding the slide, adding the bits onto the slide. Uh, this one here is um, for some reason it's um, and this um, didn't happen when I used it kind of um, a year or so ago, uh, but it did when I used it in the last couple of months. Um, for some reason, it's the grid dot arrange, which arranges the graphs. Need this DML wrapper onto it. Um, it's um, I'm guessing it's because of um, upgrades within the package, um, but either way, it's just like kind of the the DML uh, package, which is from the RV, so the DML function from the RVG package um, can be used for that. Um, all of uh, these, I've I've got um, three graphs that I want to put on. I want to put my attendances, I want to put my breaches, and I want to put my emissions on there. How is it that I would like these um, separated? Well, I want the number of rows to be three, so I want them one under the other. Very welcome to put n col. 
and that is the number of columns to put them um, as kind of side by side instead of um, each underneath the other. I've said uh, the location just, just for the uh, left, and um, because I've got my two content uh, slide, slide um, I two content layout, ideally I want my graphs to be on the left, and then um, we've got text on the right. Because I've got um, the different um, uh, sections of text within it, so I've got a text explaining the attendances, I've got a text explaining the breaches, and also I've got some text um, involving the admissions. What you can use is this um, block list uh, function. And so what, you, what, what this means is that you can take uh, little bits um, within it. Apologies, I did not update this for... Um, uh, that's nice and general. Um, list will mean that you can actually put in separate bits of text, each separated by a, um, uh, each kind of separated out. So in here, it's just like kind of my title is going to be of my text format one. So I've put this as kind of bold and I think it will come up as blue and size 16. Whereas then all of my other information I've just put as the kind of the standard um, text format. So within this F text function, lots of different things that um, you can one of my um uh, after google i think my next uh use thing is the question mark uh box uh which is this is going to be not oh yes got some examples down there um so you can put in um, the, the different uh, things that uh, you want kind of bold you've got shading you've got all sorts of uh, kind of different things um in there so within that uh, got my three uh, sections there and then I'm uh, going to put it on that's going to be on the right but again you can use it um, the left um, uh, top left height uh, width to kind of change the uh, size very very kind of customizable uh, there and again I'm just going to export the powerpoint so if I run through that, um, with any luck it will, um, green, 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 happy news, um, it will produce two slides. One is the um, our uh, title uh, slide that you're probably sick of seeing by now. And then the other slide is, well, it could probably do with a little bit more um, kind of rearranging um, uh, to kind of make these a little bit bigger. Maybe you just want two of the slides on there because they appear to be a little bit squished. Or alternatively, you may wish to say, well, if they're all going to have the same legend, I may as well take the legend off and kind of put it down here, for example. Um, this um, here, we've got um, uh, slideshows information for NHS organisations. It has repeated it twice for some reason. I will uh, check out why it's done that. Um, but it's just like kind of this is all the individual um, sentences all kind of put together there. Um, and so that was the, the, the kind of the left version and the right version. Why has it repeated it twice? There'll be some sort of code that is repeated twice in there. Um, not obvious, is it? Um, in the text for this, no text appear to just be that text. I can't quite answer that. That's very odd. I don't know why it's come out twice. Uh, apologies for that. It's, um, I'll leave on it again. Don't think it will have a, uh, a different result. No, it come up twice again. Apologies for that. I didn't tweak that one. Um, I will have a look at that one to see why it is that that has come up twice because it shouldn't. Um, the text for slide. Oh, unless the previous, um, I wonder when we previously ran it, I did copy and paste it. I don't know whether 
I uh, saved it with that multiples on there. No, that wasn't the issue. Apologies for that. Um, uh, I will find out why that um, has gone a bit uh, very, uh, a bit odd. Um, right, any questions um, from kind of anyone? Um, this, do feel free to um, answer, ask questions. Um, anything that um, we can do to kind of like help you with your PowerPoint um, uh, templates, etc. cetera, uh, do go for it. Um, the other bits that um, I thought before, um, uh, after I'd sent out the files, was um, adding different objects on. So it's just like kind of, um, you may wish to add images, you may wish to add tables. Um, the flex table package um, is absolutely brilliant in terms of uh, customizing your tables. Unfortunately, I think there was an upgrade within the flex table package, but either way, it didn't appear to work on um, my um, quite relatively old version of our studio. So what I had to uh, do is um, kind of go to uh, this table grob um, package, which uh, kind of worked uh, to kind of put, put a table into the uh, slides. I've got no questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of look at adding other um, objects in there. So apologies that this isn't in the file that I uh, sent out, but I'm going to follow exactly the same um, kind of uh, formats as these ones here. So if I get one of the um, standard things in here, to content left hand side. Um, I don't know if um, people are kind of um, used to using Notzone at all, um, but it's just like kind of to um, do a code chunk. It's you start with the weird little. Um, it's not kind of like a, um, a little backwards tick, but it's just like kind of it's um, uh, on my keyboard. It's located just next to the number one, um, and then putting another uh, set of kind of uh, ticks will kind of open and close the code chunk, but within it. Um, we need then a set of curly brackets and it has gone grey. Um, so this is the, the kind of, I tend to uh, label it with um, the R code and then what's going on. So adding an um, image in there. This is kind of how you can um, put in code chunks within and it's automatically done all the nice formatted things like we're doing the play button. So if I put in there, we've got um, the uh, Come to a copy just uh, from the top. It's kind of one of the standard uh, things there. Two content, two content. I'm just going to get rid of that one. So now I've got the kind of standard code I've been using uh, quite a lot. And that's the reading in the PowerPoint, adding in the title slide, adding in the um, uh, title, and then adding in that subtitle there. Um, for two uh, content um, uh, slides, I'm going to put um, just with an image with, um, oh gosh, it, and uh, I'm going to put text in here. So it's just like kind of I'm going to put my image, image and then the other side I'm going to put my text. It's um, uh, title, I'm just going to leave as the, um, oh, actually, here we go. Um, and then on the uh, right hand side, I'm just going to put some uh, text is um, um, again, if you want to do the backslash and n, it puts all of the um, uh, text onto different rows and um, onto different bullets, and so you can kind of keep filling it in there. Next thing, um, it's going to be a value, so I'm going to take off this. Um, I'm going to want to put it at the uh, location left, which when you see the picture, you're probably going to think, oh gosh, that's absolutely huge. So I'm probably going to want to actually kind of um, do this a little bit uh, better. Um, I'm going to have, uh, my value is going to be my image. So it's just like kind of, so I'm going to upload my um, kind of image just using the file.path 
code. So file dot uh, path, and then I'm going to paste the file path together with the name of the file, and then separated by these um, little um, kind of uh, forward slash things in there. Um, hopefully, if I should be able to um, do that and pop it in at the very top. Then uh, my path output, I will just double check that that is the um, path output that I took that I actually want. Uh, yes, it's the one in our studio. I can see it there. And so now what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the um, pH width and then external, um, uh, what's it called? External identity. Um, so the value is going to be the external IMG um, and input uh, DQ image. I'm going to have it just on the left. Um, so if I run through that code just to check it's um, happy, real, and then I will copy and paste this to the chat. There we go. Chat, chat, chat. Um, if it is useful for um, kind of anyone, um, so we've got the uh, um, picture on the left and the text on the right. And if I bring that PowerPoint uh, slide back, example presentation. Um, you probably see that there is some sort of resizing that, it, that kind of needs to happen with that. Um, but you've got this um, idea that you can upload the images as well. If, for example, you're, um, you wish to, for example, load, your, um, load the office template presentation, you can actually put all of your um, uh, organisation uh, logos, details and everything like that up as pictures if you would like. Um, it's, it, it totally depends. It's just like kind of this was one route that I could have uh, gone down what I did for mine because of the lack of options within the uh, NHS um, England and uh, improvement options was uh, within the body I was able to just say right I want the picture to be there I want the picture to be here um, and I want it this big etc um, but yeah lots of different kind of ways around that you can do it and um, you've got the image there but again you can kind of um, put it a, a lot nicer so if um, we'll put one here. Um, instead of putting it as the um, location on the left, what we can do is we can use instead of that uh, location left at kind of function, we've got this uh, the location location is equal to, and we're going to actually super specify uh, this now. Um, and if I go to to the slides we've got um this um section here and so it quite literally just um kind of you can choose where it is that you would like it to be put um, so i'm just going to lift the whole of that and bring that down to the end there so instead of um, location equals no, nope, we've got location equals. I think I've copied location as well. Uh, so location equals um, one from the uh, left, kind of top two point five width eight eight height uh, four. Well, it's just like kind of this is what we use for the graph. So I know that the graph is absolutely massive. Um, so it's just like kind of a B. The um, if we put uh, the width is. Mm, one and the, uh, so two and the height as one and then ideally I want it coming at the top right so it's from the left um, and this is uh, kind of uh, for me a little bit of a kind of like a playing around and um, see see which um, kind of fits a little bit better um put it at the very top there um, so instead of uh, the uh, text that we had before I've now changed it into something that is um, perhaps a little bit different, which is uh, I've just chucked that into the uh, chat. 
the changes that submitted there. Just a second, my um, PowerPoint slide is not open. And going through there. And if we now open up that um, slide deck. Um, we've got, oh, yes, happy days. It's looking much, much better. And um, so you've got the option to either put it into the um, a particular place, the body, the left, the right, or you can actually kind of uh, choose where it is that you want to put um, kind of um, to resize. Um, so obviously you can put it absolutely anywhere. When you put um, objects on, exactly um, like if you were kind of pasting objects from Excel, the first one that gets put on is at the back. So it's like kind of in terms of the ordering, uh, you, you may wish to kind of choose to put, put them on in a particular um, order just to kind of make sure that um, there's something that you are kind of totally keen that you see all of it on the very top there. Um, right, we've got... Um, yep. I think there was, please. Um, the only other thing that we've got um, as well is um, option two, um, add a table onto a slide. Um, so we've got the images there and we can also do the same thing with a table. Um, Flex table, as I've said, is a really, really good package. It's um, the nice thing is that you can actually go on to, um, uh, there's lots and lots of uh, user guidance about using Flex table. You can make the um, table different colours, you can change the format, you can change the columns, you can do you change the text, you can change, um, but you can have conditional formatting on it. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, I originally wanted to uh, use that with the uh, slides that um, I kind of created about six months ago or so. Unfortunately, it um, appeared that the um, uh, it, it, it didn't quite like uh, the version of my um, um, uh, our studio on my laptop so um, we had to go kind of a different direction which is why I've gone down the grid arrange and table grob uh, function which kind of arranges it and this table grob is and um, it works for um, uh, my kind of like slightly older uh, version of our studio so hopefully it will be kind of um, happy with yours. Right, it's um, 11.26, it's just like kind of, it's um, uh, very flexible in terms of uh, this workshop. Um, happy to uh, take questions, happy to take um, uh, any, um, uh, happy to kind of give advice where um, I can. But what I'll do is I'll finish off this um, table section and then if anyone's got any um, questions that you'd uh, like you either kind of message uh, privately message to the group um, and so it will be kind of um, after this table section if we have a kind of a 10 minute uh, break and then it's kind of really um, uh, anything that I can do to help if you want to practice with your um, own code um, and then kind of work out any um, uh, issues that you might have with me totally happy to do that. Right, uh, table on a slide, I'm going to do exactly the same um, as before. So I'm going to take the um, code that lifts this exact code for the adding an image. I'll do that and I'm going to put it uh, paste just down there. So this is all of the uh, code put in there. Just going to change it to adding table. And um, Ideally, it's just like kind of I'd want it um, instead of the uh, two content. I'd probably just have it as a, a as a um, kind of just the typical title and content. But actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to very be very specific with where I put my table. So actually, it doesn't matter if it's a two content or if it's a title and content. Um, changing um, with a table for this one. Um, and then I'm going to put in a, a table into here. Um, and in the right hand um, set of the slide, I'm just going to uh, get rid of that one. Uh, once you get rid of it, do um, remember to, and this is something I usually forget, is to uh, remove any of the percent, greater than percent, the and then 
um, otherwise it will look for the next instruction and it will get really confused because it's not expecting something like that. Point. Um, instead of the value being this, uh, this one there, I'm just going to change uh, that one. And it's just like kind of either you can put it as a function or I'm just going to quite literally put it as the, the top of the a and &E tendencies. Um, then I should have um, put that a little bit more space out. So we've got the, I'm just going to put uh, indent the lines to just double check it is exactly as it's meant to be and yes we've got the location has uh, now gone right under the uh, no it hasn't apologies I think it's meant to go uh, code the indent lines I think it's meant to be level with that value I will just check in this one there code, re the lines. Yes, apologies, it's the uh, value and location are meant to be kind of one under each, each other and it automatically formats. So um, it means in the uh, code I've got here, I just need to take out um, possibly another one bracket if I code, re the lines. Nope, it's got even worse. I've gone the other way around to put in the uh, brackets. Apologies for this. Um, we the lines. We are getting there. Good. We indent the lines. That's looking a lot better. So it's just like kind of so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that entire thing, except for the image, and paste it into the top. Um, big thing with this is just like kind of it's um, the pH with function is super super flexible. It's just like kind of you've got lots and lots of different options. I tend to just use the value and the location um, arguments with them, but lots of um, other things that you can do. And certainly the question mark pH underscore with is um, super brilliant to be able to kind of um, really put those in exactly the place that you want. Um, so within that, um, I've got a lot of uh, brackets there, so I'm going to um, space everything out a little bit and make it a little bit easier to read and write. So the data that I'm using is the uh, is the head of the attendances. So it's like we're just going to see the original six columns of data, and it's the head that so automatically takes the first six rows. Uh, table block is um, how we're going to put the table on there, and this kind of uh, DML and grid dot arrange uh, functions will just allow me to kind of put the table onto the slides itself. So, in terms of what the data it is that we've got in here, it's just literally the head A and E attendances. So, if you're repeating this, it's just like kind of that. That's the only thing that you need to change. Um, and fingers crossed, if we um, pop. Uh, add the, uh, it's a table, not a graph. Uh, if we go through there, it's uh, not happy. It says uh, an argument value is missing. Um, have I forgotten to put pH with value is missing with no default? All right. There's something um, obvious that I've forgotten on here. Um, good dot range. Ooh, I think maybe it's I needed to have put the not level. Nope. for this one here. Um, I'm going to copy over the text that I know that worked. So DML, grid dot arrange, table grub, and this one here, instead of putting in this function, 
going to have my the head of the alien attendances. One, two, three. One, two, three. Sorry about this. Unexpected symbol in print. Right, um, I will uh, forget that and I will put all of those popping them right over. There will be a bracket that I have missed out for something very uh, obvious that I've missed in there. Uh, with the okay, the um, ones that were pasted onto the chat was, I believe, it was this one here. Um, so we've got uh, pH with uh, value is the. Uh, DML uh, table grub. Open that and we've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four with a little comma and we've got two brackets there. I'm not altogether sure with that one. Right, apologies for that. I'm just going to repaste it. Um, actually, that uh, works. It will be something. This is the um, um, so I've just recopied um, this into the chat. Apologies uh, for that. It will be uh, some sort of weird bracket thing that I haven't put in. Um, re indent lines. Yes, that is meant to be the value. I'm not, I'm not going to touch that one. Uh, right, so rerunning uh, that, we should see that we've got a nice kind of table in here. Uh, so it's all for any presentation then. Um, we've um, chopped in a table. Um, not particularly user friendly um it's certainly in the wrong place we've got all the columns has kind of been cut off it's just like kind of there's obviously something wrong with the width because it's kind of um cut um everything off there but what we can do is um kind of uh, go back and kind of uh, fix those make sure it's um, a little bit uh, better um i am conscious that i've been um, rambling for um uh, almost an hour again so it's um i'm going to um just looking at better ways into um, in terms of positioning the table um if you've got um, any questions any queries do feel free to kind of pop them into the chat and um, if you've got any um things that um any code that uh, you're interested in again please uh, pop them into the chat otherwise it's just like kind of that is really kind of the end of the material that I have um, kind of uh, prepared so it's really kind of um, options for you to kind of uh, practice ask questions um, and certainly what um, we can do just after the um, um, uh, table section is then kind of um, pause the recording I suppose Sharon um, and then it's just like kind of and then people can ask any questions. Want to pause now? That'd be cool, perfect. Um, um, so I've got the attendant table attendances, uh, head of the attendances, and I'm just literally going to put uh, rows equals and then null. And what this uh, does is exactly like when you export a CSV file, um, what you'll be able to do, oh, I don't know why that very odd symbol went in there. Um, what you'll be able to do is um, the rows kind of null or row headings equals null and um, we'll be able to just take off those little numbers 
Um, if I then just go to back to back to there. The only difference should be is that the identifiers have now just been taken off. So you've just got the um, uh, table as standard. Within each of the um, so, uh, kind of uh, columns, you can certainly set, you've got the um, comma format um, to kind of um, have it as say 21,000 instead of 21289, which I find uh, very difficult to read. You can select different columns um, and to make it um, just kind of a little bit more streamlined. But in terms of kind of adding a table, that's how um, I said add a table to it. Um, we've got them, um, and I will uh, send out this um, updated uh, markdown file here. So we've got an option where we add in an image. We've got an option where we add in a uh, table. Um, the only other uh, thing that I do is sometimes kind of wrap it around. Um, so for example, I might automate and, and kind of put all of this within say a function. So it's just like kind of the, um, you read in the PowerPoint, and then you kind of automatically add all of the different kind of uh, component uh, parts to it. Um, would it be helpful if I go through that? I'll take a, um, a no as it may be helpful. Um, so if I go to one of the uh, earlier slides um, earlier on, I can put in the, uh, create the line graph, put in the PowerPoint, um, if I put the graph onto the slides. So within this, um, put the PowerPoint there. Um, so I'm just going to uh, get rid of everything that's on there. Um, so this is kind of code that we've kind of previously met. Um, it um, reads in the PowerPoint and then within the PowerPoint, it um, kind of adds a slide. Adds, an, adds a title and then adds in the, the kind of the, the, the subtitle to it. Um, because this um, type of information you might actually want to put, um, or actually even better, apologies, if I go for the multiple slides, that's probably a little bit more exciting. Uh, multiple slides. Multiple slides, right way more exciting than um, any of the other bits. If I put these in here, then what we've got uh, there is we've got the um, title slides in there. And then we've got something that is probably going to be reused quite um, a number of times. So it's all of this is to do with putting in the three line charts for um, uh, RDU and then putting in the text for RDU. So actually what I can do is I could actually just replace this with the um, org measure and kind of really put it as a function instead. So what do you, uh, I mean? So if we've got the uh, function is um, the PowerPoint, I call it just function uh, uh, PowerPoint. And then you can put the uh, function around it with the little curly brackets, start the curly brackets and end the curly brackets. What is it that we're going to return? It's the um, this PowerPoint, we're going to add stuff into this PowerPoint. Um, so I'm going to return and then this PowerPoint there. The only thing that appears to be different with this one is the actual organization. So what we can do is we can actually put in there um, the uh, organization org to use. Org to use. And then within here, I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to paste it into wherever there is an RTU. Or to use. Or to use. And or to use. Or to use. Or to use. What we 
the things then is if I then run that function there, I've got within the uh, function part I, um, a function that all I need to do is to put in an organization and it automatically runs all of this. So if I then just uh, close that one there, I might have my original um, set of slides. I've read in my PowerPoint, I've added a slide, put a title on it, put a kind of um, subtitle on it. And then in the next part, what then I do is um, I've added a two content one um, with a, a generic title, but again, this can be fully automated. And then I'm going to find my function. And there's only one argument there put inside, and it does have a function, the line graph onto the text function side. I've automatically kind of, um, uh, um, kind of put, put um, I've said what it is, the measures for those just here. So I've said for the function line chart, I want the all to use, which was the same one there, and then the attendances, breaches, admissions. So if I just run that, and I just need to stick a little uh, print of this PPT into there, uh, I'm going to read in the PowerPoint, I'm going to add a slide, I'm going to create it for my kind of um, org to use, and I'm going to print it. Um, I do need to say which organisation I do need to use. Um, you and um, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to kind of copy that and I'm going to put it for um, one of the um, other organizations um, I'm going to put it uh, RRA uh, the leads as well and so now if I run this one and um, it's puts it uh, kind of nicely printed it out the nice thing with um looking in the r script is you can actually kind of like see a little bit of it um in there as well um, so now if i then go over and open this right up um we've got the normal title slide on here you've got the rdu attenders attendances, breaches and admissions. And then on the next one, you've got the R8 attendances, breaches and admissions. Aha, I think it's probably because there is two. That explains it. Brilliant, answered my own question. Um, the um, RR8 leads, it only had um, one um, maximum admissions. So this um, text, which I only expected to be uh, brought out once, has only been repeat, has only been um, shown once. The RDU, because it's got um, the maximum admissions is 6642 for two separate months. This is actually kind of um, repeated the um, whole text in there. So in terms of um, kind of uh, fixing that, we might want to kind of put, for example, the, the peak um, period, uh, so the most recent period only, um, so that then you get just kind of like the nice uh, one section style thing there. Um, but in terms of a, um, repeating the same sort of slide, this text then kind of makes it a lot kind of easier. So if I put in there, so this is the, if you would like to be very welcome. Um, so this is the function, uh, the text, uh, create a function. Um, so that text, uh, there kind of literally just automates it and the only thing that I have changed will be to put the function wrap around around it. Change that um, the actual organization into um, a parameter and then returned with this PowerPoint. So it's kind of the um it's it's quite literally the whole thing just adds a slide puts the graph on, puts the text on, and then you can then do a much more kind of streamlined then set of codes then for 
any organization then that you want so you can kind of copy that and uh, replace for the, um, any organization and it quite literally just spits it out and um, there was a question earlier on about the kind of the um, more of a loop thing and repeating it for a lot of um, uh, organizations and this is where it's for some reason I've kind of haven't quite managed to figure out the intricacies of it and um, because I would certainly want to kind of really parameterize uh, that I suppose and say right I've got my org list so for every organization in the list go through that function uh, PowerPoint so get me a slide get me a title get me a set of graphs and get me a text box there's something that I haven't quite uh, twigged it'll probably be knowing me something quite basic um, but it's just like at the moment I haven't been able to loop it so it has been a case of kind of copying that uh, copying this function and then putting in a different uh, organization that I want it for I suppose the nice thing because we've put all of the graphs onto one um, kind of page it does mean that I don't have to type admissions breaches or admission um, or attendances or one after the other however what you can do is within here you can um, separate it out really as you want you may wish um, to have the um, add, um, add the slide add a title and content and just have a um, one slide with the text and then you can kind of copy that within this function uh, maybe you want a separate um, slide for the attendances and then you want a separate slide for the breaches and then a separate slide for the admissions if you change it like that it will mean when you do the function powerpoint then you'll have one slide for RRA attendances, one slide for RRA emissions, one slide for RRA breaches, and so forth. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that into the uh, markdown file. I will be sending this to, through to um, kind of Sharon to um, forward out if that's okay, Sharon. Um, so starting off this uh, code chunk with the open curly brackets. Those curly brackets, and this is the R um, create power point function. Um, power function. So this kind of uh, function there with just the all to use, nothing changed. Um, um, from putting it from the R script into the markdown, so everything just um, as normal. Um, I could run it, but it'll probably be um, not. Oh, right, there was what went wrong. Uh, incomplete expression. I think I've forgotten to finish at the end of that curly bracket. Uh, copying up into uh, in haste there. Happy days. It's um that is kind of over overwritten the one that um uh, previously stored, but since they're both the same, it makes no difference. And then the example then that we use to actually kind of um then use this function. I'm just going to copy that and open up this next kind of section of the code chunk. And so this will be the R uh, using ATT function. Um, and the nice thing is, it's like, as you can see, it's um, very much um, kind of streamlined in terms of the uh, code. And you can be super um, flexible and put whatever organization it is that you want in there. So I'm just going to uh, run it to, just to double check that there is um, no funny uh, business that it's going to do. We've got the, I don't know why it's come up with that one. That's rather random. random. Um, bring that over and should give exactly the same as before. Um, we've got the title slide there. We've got the um, RDU kind of uh, attendance breaches and admissions. 
got the two bits of information because of the um, maximum number is um, reached for two consecutive months. Um, we've got the RR8, which is the lead information in there. And then we have the ROA, which is Manchester information, which because we the Manchester um, organisation merged to form ROA in October 2017, we don't have the back data for the 1617, um, but we do have all the rest of the data. Um, that is kind of um, hopefully kind of covered quite a lot of um, things that you may find useful. Um, would, did anyone have any questions um, about um, anything like that? Anything that might apply to yours or you know, just time to um, practice? Clicking up to. Um, I'm going to be kind of um, um, online um, until kind of everyone uh, leaves. So it's just like, do feel free to kind of message um, the team or message kind of uh, privately. Very, very um, happy to help with any particular bits of code. Um, but it's just like kind of, yes, that, that's the uh, probably the um, kind of extent of the things that I personally would use um, the Office R for. And so, yeah, happy to take questions, but also happy for you to enjoy and have a little bit extra time back in your day. No problem. Thank you, everyone. If you haven't got the link to the evaluation form, let me know and I can send it to you. Ooh. I just realised, could everyone actually hear me? I didn't put my earphones yes. on. Well, I heard you, yes. Oh, phew. Because it, it, it was only when I heard your voice coming out of the um, uh, headphones. I was just like, oh, my gosh, yikes. I haven't actually put the headphones on. But clearly, I just speak too loudly anyway. So it's uh, happy days. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like.